Hello, this is Dina with Pretty Productive. We're a mother-daughter Etsy shop that makes all things budget and planner related. Today we're going to be doing our first December check-in. Today is December 13th, so we're midway through the month. Um, been good and bad <laughs> this month so far. So we'll go ahead and get started. So um, this is what I had estimated our bills for, for our fixed expenses at the beginning of the month. And we've had a lot of these come in. And then I'll show you where I am with my cash envelopes as well as where I am with sinking funds. So Christmas has made this month a little difficult because I have sinking funds for Christmas, but I've also started Christmas shopping a lot on Black Friday, which was the very beginning of this budget but also throughout the month, I've done a lot of online shopping. So I'm just keeping a running total right now and then I'll, it's all going on my Capital One card and then I'll just clear the sinking funds, but we'll get into that in just a moment. So let's take a look of where we are at for right now. So for my mortgage, I budgeted 3,300, it was 3,300. Cell phone had come in before um, my budget set up, so that was right. Telephone is the same. Internet is the same. Actually, this is going to go down $10. We just switched out our router, and I guess I didn't realize this, but we had been renting our router. So we have uh, changed that. We went ahead and bought one. So that will come down, I think, $10 a month. Netflix, $15. Water Trash was $133. That had uh, already come in before I set up my budget. Electric was a lot less. It actually came in at $95. And so that was a difference of $105. Now the reason why this was 95 versus um, where it was last year, which was 158, was there was a tax credit. For some reason, we got a $63 tax credit. So the first time I looked at my bill and what it was gonna be, it said I had a negative $63 balance, which would have been fantastic. But then when they applied the, bill of what I owed, which was 156, the net amount that we owe is 95. So it was a one-time tax credit. Um, we live in Arizona, I don't know what it was about, but anyway, so our bill was 95, so $105 difference. Life insurance stays the same, auto insurance is the same. Um, natural gas, I had predicted it was gonna be about 45 based on last year, um, but it really came in at $32. So the difference is 13. Um, Elements will be the same, Allie Edwards the same, Audible the same. Clothing is a virtual envelope. I have not spent any money out of this envelope this month, um, so it's still there. Medical copays, I'm gonna go over in because I had a dental bill for $8.80 that was a balance due, and then I just got a bill for $32 that is a balance due from when my daughter went to the dentist, and then I'm going on Monday and that'll be a $30 copay. So that means 32 plus 18 plus 30. I'm really gonna spend $71. So I'm over 41. And then side hustle, I pretty good about being in that 300, but um, I'm gonna be a little bit over again, as I am every single month. Okay, um, so then I kinda of just wanna walk you through um, my debt snowball. So my Barclay card, I, I made my payment of 1,243, which paid off the balance, so my new balance is zero. Barclay Apple, I paid 200, so my balance is 1,772. My Chase card um, was 3,200. My payment of 900 comes out tomorrow, and so I'll be at 2,300. Um, my sinking funds are pretty much the same. I don't calculate the end of for gifts and Christmas until the end of the month when I clear my Capital One card and make sure that everything is paid. And then the thousand that I had estimated plus what I had estimated last month that I actually put in the sinking fund account, that I'll tell you what my ending balance is on the beginning of January. Um, paychecks have all been as expected. Okay, so weekly check-ins. This is where it got a little messy, and I'm gonna say messy as a um, understatement. So I 
decided to change it this month. So instead of just putting down the budget of what I was stuffing for that time period, I went ahead and decided to use the whole budget. So for groceries, I have 700 was my budget. The first week I spent 246, which left me 454 in that account. When I brought that down, 454, this week I spent 286, I have 213 left. So I did order HelloFresh twice. The first box that I ordered, we didn't get any meat. Well, we got meat, but it was shrimp and that was not what I ordered. So I called them. They were very nice to go ahead and credit me for that box. So my second box I had ordered for the month ended up being $7. So I did put that money back into my budget. So that is back into this number. For eating out, I said 300. I spent 80 the first week. 20 the second week, so I have $200 left. Which does not seem right to me, but I, that's the way it worked out. Um, my husband did have surgery the beginning of the month, so we ha I've cooked almost every night, so that's probably why I haven't eaten out as much. Um, grooming, I put in 80, I have not used any of that money, and that is something I'm gonna be using this week. I have mas a massage on Sunday, so I will be using part of that money. Giving, I put 500, and the reason why all my numbers went up is December is actually a five-week month in the budget in my budgeting, so I did need to increase all of my categories to account for that fifth week. So giving was 500. Um, <clears throat> I have 300 left that I will be um, putting back in with my envelopes. Household was 110. I have spent that 110. She's only coming once this month, so I did not, I'm not funding that anymore this month. Entertainment, recreation, I put 200 in. I spent 93, so I had 107, and then I still have 107 um, to go into the account. And then my allowance, I started with 250. I've spent 100, so I have left 150, okay? So that's where we stand right now. So what has gotten super messy is Christmas. So I spent money on Black Friday, got a lot of my shopping done on Black Friday, and I used my Capital One card. I then went shopping with cash, and so I spent money that was the sinking fund money that I was going to put in in cash. And then I did some online shopping and I did my Capital One card for that. So at the end of the day, I know exactly what's on my card and where, how I'm paying that money off. So I'm very comfortable that everything is going to be paid off for Christmas, but it's been very hard for me to track in here because it's been some on my card, some in cash. Um, I don't want to put receipts in here because my family will see it and then they'll know what they're getting. So I've just really been keeping my envelope for gifts just stuffed with receipts. So let me show you what we've got going on in this little madness in here. So for groceries, um, I have left 20, no, $41. So I'm going to just leave that in there because I know that I still need to do shopping for Christmas Day. We are hosting this year. And I still need to, um, I did not order HelloFresh for the next two weeks. So I'll do, I will need to go grocery shopping and meal prepping for next week and the week of Christmas. So I'm just gonna put that to the side and leave that in the envelope. But I do have all of my receipts in here. And I will need a new card because that one is filled. So I'm gonna leave this 21 or 41 in here. Eating out uh, is very empty, and so I will be stuffing this one. Recreation is empty, so I'll be putting money in that. Allowance is very empty. I think I have $2 left in my wallet right now. Um, giving is empty. And then personal care, I started with 80. I still have 80. And I'll be using some of that this weekend. And then um, we'll see going forward what else I need. And then gifts right now is just a whole lot of receipts. So um, I am keeping track on a card of what I've spent so that I know exactly what's on the card. And then I've been checking my Capital One card as well just to make sure that everything that goes on that card I've noted in either my fixed expenses or on my gifts so that I, I can clear that card at the end of the month. 
Okay, so let's get started. Get this out of the way. So I took out all together, get my cheat sheet up here, my wrong cheat sheet. I took out $650. So the way I broke it out was four $100 bills, nine $20 bills, three tens, and eight fives. I usually round up um, so that I don't deal with a lot of ones. I know a lot of people will go ahead and leave it like exact, but I, I round up naturally all the time. Okay. Um, and if you've followed my uh, channel before, you've seen this many times. It's from um, an Etsy shop called A Time for Everything, I believe it is. And it is like a wallet and it came with dividers as well. So any of my envelopes, I also have a divider with the same tab. And I use that for the money that I am holding for the next check-in. So my next check-in will be on the 27th, which is um, another payday for us. And it is the end of the month. And these are the tabs that what I do is any excess I put under here, I leave at home. And then that way I make sure I don't overspend in any one of my categories. So the first thing we're going to do is groceries. And I am putting in $200. So um, I'm gonna leave 13 in the account just in case I need it and just so they can make my life easy. So 200 will go into groceries. And I still have 41 in here, so there'll be 241 in here. And I did need a new register because I had filled up the other one. So 12, 13, fund, 200, 241. Part of the challenge I think of where I really messed up between my envelopes was I went to Costco and I grocery shopped and I got things for Christmas and my daughter used, we did our transaction together so she owes me money so I've gotta sort all that out. Um, then I bought my other daughter a anniversary gift that should have just come out of the gifting fund, not the Christmas fund. So yeah, I did a lot of what I tell people not to do, which is mix envelopes up, but there you have it. For um, gifts, we're not gonna stuff that. So for eating out, I am going to put in $100. And I'm going to use 20s, just cause I like that better. Today is the 13th and we are going to fund and balance will be 100. So that leaves me $100 more in eating out, which if I need to, um, then I can always add that back in. I just go to the bank and pull that out. But I kind of feel like we're not gonna be going out a lot between now and when I stuff envelopes again on the 27th, so I feel like it's good to leave it in there in case I wanna do some online ordering. So eating out is 100. And then grooming, we're not gonna fund. And then giving, I'm going to fund with $200. So one will go in for this weekend. And then the other will go into the tab for next weekend. So 12-13 fund. This is where I messed myself up last time. So I didn't write that I took it out because I just noted it on my transaction. So I've got to decide if I'm doing both or not. So this goes back in here. And then my tab for giving, sorry, 
right here. And the other $100 bill goes under giving. And then next week, um, a week from now when I go to church, I'll just grab this $100 bill before I go and that will go back in. It comes back out of that envelope. Okay. And then entertainment, recreation, I am doing $50. Let me do allowance first because that always messes me up if I don't. So allowance is $50 a week. I divide it up. Instead of putting the entire $100 into allowance, which I know I will spend, I put 50 in and then I take 50 and put it under my tab. What I've been doing with this one is just putting it in my wallet um, and that way I leave the cash, the other cash at home. And so I'm not tracking on here when I spend it. But it's always a good feeling when you're able to put more money in your wallet when you currently have a dollar in there. <laughs> Let me see, allowance. Oh, already out here. So the $50 that will be for next week, which is, let's see, today's 13th. So on the 20th, I'll go into my wallet and I'll grab this 50. I'll grab the money for church and I'll put that into um, my envelopes. And so that leaves $50 for recreation and entertainment. All right, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, perfect. Um, now we did go to a movie and dinner the other night with my sister and brother-in-law. And so there was, um, I used some of that money for this. We also went to Phoenix Flea, so that came out of, my tickets and parking came out of here. Tuesday morning, um, and then Joanne's. Joanne's is always on here. So it leaves $107 in there, so I'll still have money for the next cash stuffing. So 50 is going in here. And I did find that it is better for me to go ahead and leave money in the account. I did use money out of the account because I did some online shopping, and instead of putting the money back in, I just went ahead and left some of it in there. So I actually had a negative number in here, which is never good. So my balance is 50 and that leaves $57 still in the account for recreation. And if I can stop shopping for myself and shop for other people, then I will stop spending money from this category. So for eating out and groceries this time, there is not going to be money over here. Um, because I put the whole thing in the envelopes. I think this time of year, it's, it's been, I've been out more, I've been spending money more, I've been shopping kind of unexpectedly more than I normally would. I mean, I normally know exactly when I'm going to the grocery shop store or when I'm going to a restaurant because I work from home, so that means I've left the house to go do those things. Um, this time I've been out a lot more, so I've been swinging by stores on my way home or going to pick up food on my way home. And so I've needed to have this with me at all times. So it's been a little bit different this month, but January we will be right back on track. So these two go into my envelope and that's for giving and for my allowance. And then for my envelopes, they go back in here. And I think uh, next year I'm gonna kind of change this around a little bit, maybe use a different binder. Um, still, of course, using cash envelopes, but I, may, I might just change it around a little bit and see. My purse is getting super heavy. And I still like to have just a wallet that I can grab and not always have to grab this entire thing. And my wallet currently fits the envelopes as well. So if I just want to grab a grocery envelope or a going out envelope, 
then I can. So I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking about it and deciding what I'm going to do, but I am going to be doing something. The weight alone sometimes just would help if I didn't overstuff this binder as well. Okay, so cash envelopes are ready for the week and for next week. Um, my backup money is in here. This stays at home. Um, on here, I've got it pretty much already updated. So this is what I'm left with in my budget um, for starting on Sunday. And then the money that I have for the next two weeks is either here or here. And I think that's it, right? Yes. Um, so a couple of things that I kind of wanted just to review that I've had a lot of questions on. Um, one is how do you decide what's going into your cash envelopes? Like how do you decide that up front? So I feel like with a budget, it takes three months, if not more, to really decide what the number needs to be. So for my family of two and now a third person, $500 a month has been fine. Now, if I had a larger family or we had all three meals a day here, then I would definitely need to increase that fund. If you find that it's week two of the month and you're out of grocery money, then definitely you need to increase that fund. So that's what's important is that you're taking a number that you feel is right, but that you're revising it if you need to. So if after the first month you realize, hey, I put $500 into my budget, but I only use $300 of it, then go ahead and reallocate the other 200. If you find that you're midway through the month and you've used all your money and you need to like shop out of your pantry and your freezer, then you probably need to increase that fund. The other part of it is to shop wisely. And that was one thing that I really worked on last month when one of my savings goals was to save money out of my envelopes. So I was better about where I went. I used coupons. Um, my meals sometimes didn't include red meat. They had poultry. I was just a better shopper, which is a good lesson for me because I'm more about convenience than I am necessarily about a value. So that's another option to kind of bring that bill down. And there's a lot of really talented YouTubers out there that do zero waste budgeting for food. Um, Debt Kicking Mom is one that I always think of. She's amazing. She feeds a family of six um, very frugally, but good nutritious meals as well. So that she might be one that you follow if you really are looking for that zero waste kind of budgeting for groceries. As far as eating out, that is a fund that could go away completely if I was being very um, gazelle intense with getting out of debt because it is a luxury to go out. I'm not at that stage in my life that I am that gazelle intense. I'm really at the end of this journey. So I enjoy going out. I feel like sometimes, you know, I work full time. You know, my daughter works full time. My husband is currently retired, but you know, we'll be going back to work. It's just nice to go out or grab food and bring it home, things like that. As far as um, giving and grooming, um, those are subjective to what you do with your life. I mean, I know a lot of YouTubers build in for lashes, extensions, for manicures, pedicures, massages. I do get massages. So that's just a choice that you have. So if you want to cut everything out of your budget so that you are putting everything you have towards debt, then those are those are some categories that you might be able to come down. Giving is such a personal choice um, of what you want to give, whether it's to your church or to a group that you believe in. I know that one of my ultimate goals once I'm through this journey is that I can give even more. But right now, this is what I'm able to fit into my budget and that's what I, I maintain. As far as entertainment, going out, giving yourself allowance, that's another kind of really hot topic in this community. Um, I think you have to give yourself some money to spend, whether it's $20 or $50 or $100, whatever it might be. I think if you control that too much, then you want to overspend. So I find that this time of year, because I am out shopping more and I'm buying things for others, I want to shop more for myself as well. So I have to really control that and I have to really stay on my budget because if not, I could completely derail my budget because I'm all of a sudden in a spending mode and I love to spend. So it'd be very easy for me to buy things for myself as well. So again, it's a personal decision. 
Um, there's no right or wrong. Somebody shouldn't tell you how to budget or what to budget. These are all great ideas um, that I've learned on YouTube from this community is different ways to do it. Whether it be in an Erin Condren or a yellow legal pad or a different planner or a different budget book, whatever it is that works for you, you need to make it work for you and your family. So just, I wanted to answer a couple questions that had come up from my last video. And again, I want to thank you all for coming along on this journey with me. I really appreciate your support, your questions, your feedback. I've had so many positive feedbacks on the videos and the channel itself. So I really appreciate that. If you enjoy the videos, please subscribe, hit the notification so that you'll always know when we have a new video coming up. And I will close this video with two things that are coming, that will be coming to our channel very quickly. Um, one is a 2020 budget layout where I just anticipate for the year and then of course we'll break it down by month um, as normal or by week. And then also a budgeting 101 and that's just based on some questions that I've had on where do you start. It can be so overwhelming if you're very new to all of this and how do you start and where do you start and you know how do you even start to create your first budget. And so I am going to do a video on that just because I been spending a lot of time on different Facebook groups kind of answering people's questions and I think if a few people have the questions probably more people do as well. So have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.